talk about that later on. Oh. You have got a fan base here, though. The hype train has <laughs> left the station. <laughs> say this was 12 years 12 years yeah man mm-hmm. it is good we just threw all of that on the floor and this man has no regard for safety he is not wearing shoes he could go down while using this and john's dead wow that didn't take long enough but i'm sure he'll come back well hello welcome um everybody it is another weekly whiskey on Tuesday night for everyone that was here last night for the uh, Mellow Corn, our bourbon slash our Mellow Corn stream. It is great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. And for everybody else, welcome back to our regularly scheduled program. John, it's great to see you. I miss you a lot last night, but it's good to be back in the saddle with you, my friend. How are you? I'm doing well. It was good to see you doing uh, your beloved Mellow Corn operation. <laughs> I liked what you guys had to say about that. I don't know if it was fun, but it was like it was fun and it was weird, so it was a good time. Yeah, that's a good fit for us. Yeah, I mean, it. Yeah, there's there's no other thing to say than it was weird, but uh, you know, it's good to be back. It's good to be back in our usual rhythm. Happy Tuesday, everybody! If you're drinking something good, let us know. Um, We've got some great stuff to drink tonight. Um, I'm actually just finishing off some uh, McAllen from dinner, but I'm ready to switch gears and get back into the bourbon land. So, you drink anything good, John? Yeah, I got a little bit of the, uh, geez, which one did I grab here? Oh, the Pure Kentucky XO. Oh, yeah, okay. From the Willet portfolio there. Yeah, sure. I like a lot of their stuff for uh, like winter whiskeys, especially Johnny Drum, but I couldn't find wherever I hid that bottle away. So <laughs> I was going to go for that because it's just a crazy cinnamon bomb, but it just uh, <laughs> it didn't want to present itself. So I grabbed the uh, Pure Kentucky. I know that feeling. Sometimes, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm certain that the bottle exists and it's here, but right, you know, it, it's like nowhere to be found. No, I'll be damned if I can track that thing down. <laughs> cool. Well, in our bourbon news for this week, um, things have actually been crazy. So last week, the Knob Creek sold out. Um, it took about four minutes for the public bottles to go. We sold out a barrel of New Riff, and I think about six minutes. And uh, tonight, so if you're watching tonight, you get a little bit of a jump notice. Tonight, the rest of the Russell's Reserve 2020 bottles will go on sale to the public. They come as a set. Uh, the single barrel from Warehouse G, uh, Fruit Stand, and the single barrel from Warehouse G, again, Dessert Power, will go on for public sale. So after the stream, watch your inboxes because that email will be coming out and they will go fast. I think Coming that's, in hot. Dude, I mean, these things are flying. Like I knew they'd go fast, but when New Riff went out and six minutes i was uh i was a little flabbergasted so i mean it's a good sign lots of people are interested that gives me a lot of good reason to bring tons more barrels into 2021 and uh speaking of barrels that brings us to some old friends so who are we uh who are we uh hanging out tonight with john yeah let's introduce our guest here we've got uh mikey danny from penelope bourbon what's going hey on guys. fellas thanks for uh thanks for having us on guys good to see you yeah, again hey guys. absolutely yeah both of you have gotten considerable environment upgrades this is great <laughs> I had to upgrade. I went from a kitchen with an orchid in the back. I had to get, literally, I did it all like two weeks ago. Took the yep. bookshelf from one of our other rooms. I said, it's coming in here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mandatory upgrade. Mandatory upgrade. I like yeah, it. Yeah, how you guys doing? I'm doing well. Danny, tell me what you got behind us. It looks like you got uh, you got some lab stuff hanging out. I just been, yeah, I got a little, just a little blending lab, you know, at home in the basement. Uh, just something to work on. <laughs> Just a little. That's cool. I've uh, I was watching some of your Instagram stories. It looks like you've been uh, you've been hard at work down there. Yeah. So I made up some blends tonight. That I'll drink through the through the broadcast. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I dig it's it. Good. I think that's great. So I, I make the blends and then I drink them while we talk. <laughs> no, yep. that's good. Um, I mean, it, it's nice to see you guys have both of uh, you know, like Penelope is obviously going well and strong as you guys have upgraded and and kind of gotten settled and it's fun to check in with you guys every couple of months and see how things are going yeah no no we appreciate it so i if, if i'm not mistaken you guys have recently gotten a new facility right um i know we've talked a little bit about it but penelope you guys used to bottle at castle and key um but now you guys have a new home to uh, to call your own tell us about that yeah no this was a big initiative for us it was something um you know, we felt that as we, you know, looking at, you know, in the beginning part of 2020, as we started to ramp up production, 
Um, really a big piece for us is R and D. Uh, you know, being able to have, be, have your, you know, look, I mean, that, that's at Danny's house, what you see behind him, but there's quite a bit more to kind of the R and D pr uh, process. And, you know, we've always had our own warehouse. Um, we've, we've had a, you know, we've had a plenary warehouse where we can store our finished goods without having to go through a third party warehousing company, which mm -hmm. is, you know, has, it has its advantages. Um, and we found out that the building used to be an old chemical alcohol factory in the seventies. So this thing was already tricked out nice. for kind of a DSP. It had a lot of those kind of kind of traditional requirements that you need. And Danny being the astute mechanical engineer that he is, I said, I, you know, I'm kind of that big, big idea guy. I go, Danny, let's go get a DSP. Let's, um, you know, probably get a blending and rectifying permit in New Jersey. And what else, you know? And I was like, I think it's going to be a lot of paperwork. And... <laughs> You know, and a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of energy. And I, and I said, you know, let's just start with putting in a bottling line. Um, but we really don't have much money. So we got to do it for like, we got to do it down in like, just as, as we got to make it uh, as good as possible, but as cost effective as possible. Sure. And the big guy, Danny, got it done. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, so in, in the context of small business, what does getting it done mean? I'm curious. Oh, Danny, you want to? I mean, it was. Yeah, we it lost was, him. Yeah. I, I mean, I could, I could pick it up. I mean, we were hands on. I mean, so we don't use any, you know, we don't use a lawyer or any sort of legal services for um, every, uh, you know, any of this process. So it starts with getting, you know, going to the TTB and you've got to actually get your DSP. So before okay. you can even get into the state and what the state kind of permits and, and requirements are, you've got to go and get the DSP. Um, and so we've always had a, a wholesaler basic permit with the TTB, which okay. based on our supply chain, that was that was that was totally feasible and totally viable. However, with the DSP, there, there's obviously quite a bit more to it. Um, even if you're not necessarily going to be distilling, that's still a part of a lot of the questions and what they're looking for, because it does include that should you ever want to go down that route. Sure. So we had, a, you know, really going through the questionnaire. Um I mean, there's a lot of questions you have to go through it. There's site maps. There's just a lot that needed to be tweaked to the building. Um, and data have, and everything. Yeah, you have to have like your whole process down before you put it on paper or before you even build it and just kind of outline it for them and tell them exactly how you're going to take take it step by step. Um, we, we actually got a distilling DSP, um, you know, just to have. Okay. That seems handy. Um, earlier you said two words that I, that, I mean, I think that a lot of people understand, but maybe not everyone. You, you said bottling and rectifying. What are the difference between those two? I don't know if we lost Danny here. Yeah. We may, he may, his internet seems to be cutting out, but I'll, I'll kind of give you the lay of the land. So New Jersey kind of treats these, I mean, this is on now a state level. So once you have your DSP, then we have to go and tackle whatever state we're operating out of. And there's certain re requirements and regulation involved with that. And so from, um, from the New Jersey side, there was really two options that, you know, we could have went down. The first being a craft distillery permit, which is a great new permit that was probably opened up to the, to the public, you know, as this craft boom started to hit probably about eight years ago. Sure. Um, and it's affordable and then it comes with everything. It's, I mean, it's probably one of the cheapest permits that the, you know, the New Jersey ABC offers. Okay. And you, know, you get a tasting room, you have the opportunity to self-distribute. Um, you know, there's a lot that comes with it for a very, oh, very wow. affordable annual price. And however, on the flip side, there's also a blending and rectifying permit. And given where we were at um, and what we were gonna be doing potentially, we just felt that that blending and rectifying or that bottling and rectifying um, permit was, was better for us. Um, I don't know, Danny, if you have anything you want to add on the like the, the bottling and rectifying piece, but it was more of a manufacturing permit, whereas the craft distillery was was had a focus on having an on-premise location. Interesting. Right. Okay. Yeah. So no, it was a big step for us, man. Like, look, I I posted on it on Facebook. We we hadn't really or Instagram, we hadn't really talked about it much. It was uh Again, it's something we, you know, we need, we just need that capacity as we start to grow, having that ability to, to, you know, test cast finishes and pull samples every day to 
to be testing kind of new and you know new products to be doing different things that we're working on it's uh you know it's just something that was really important for us and you know we're obviously really excited about it so that is super exciting um real quick hey jason mash and drum good to see you oh, nice. so yeah so now that you guys have your own home so i mean once covid's done i look forward to getting back out to the east coast i'll have to come and pay you guys a visit but uh Heck yeah man always open invite <laughs> good good i mean careful it, with that it, mm -hmm. <laughs> So that could be dangerous. John's John's close. I'm close. We could get mm -hmm. some, some within striking distance. Yeah. yeah, not bad. Man, I can't remember the last time I was at a distillery or you know even just anywhere that produced alcohol. But uh, that leads into something else that I was curious about. So I noticed that this has just recently shown up, which is beautiful and new, and you guys have a total fancy rebrand. But this is a uh, batch five, if I'm not mistaken, right? This yep. Is, uh, yeah, batch yeah, five. I really no. like the etch style on the bottle there instead of the uh, the bigger label. Yeah, this is that this looks is really sharp. Dark. Yeah, wow. thanks, guys. So, what 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 can drinkers expect out of batch five mm -hmm. compared to? I think, oh man, I'm dating myself here in the short timeline that is Penelope so far. But I think the last batch I had was like one or two. So the difference, you know, what what can drinkers expect in batch five here? Yeah, I mean, I, look, I mean, our whole process is evolving. Um, mm -hmm. I look at every batch we're improving the you know the our craftsmanship. Uh, you know, I think that's been that's been the fun part of this is, you know, we internally, Danny and I, we we continually want to invest in product, um, meaning, you know, if it's us investing time, if it's if it's getting folks to help us, whatever it might be, we're, we're always, you know, and the juice is getting older. It's always investing in the product um, because, you know, we, we knew we were going to start this company off two to three year old juice. Okay. And as we now move in 2020 being our first, you know, first full year, that's our first full calendar year. Um, you know, we knew that there, you know, we're going to start to see some of that progression and it's still baby steps. Like we're not making any sort of leaps and bounds, but that, that was always the idea was that, you know, it's a marathon. Um, we'll respect the process. You know, it doesn't happen overnight and there's a lot that we can continue to do from a blend perspective to, to improve the, the quality at, um, the end product that we're putting out there. We're, lo we're yeah. looking at each batch like a blank slate. You know, it's a separate group of barrels that we pulled. You know, we're going through each barrel. We're kind of, we're just trying to give it our all for each batch and kind of make that expression deeper, richer, um, just as we understand our mash bills more and more. Sure. Yeah. So as you put this one together, are you noticing right off the bat that like with the older stock that you're working with, like, is this a noticeably different product than batch four or three or two, whatever? I mean, Jay, you might even be able to test it. I think it's a noticeably different product uh, significantly. And from my, cause I'm so, my palate is so, I mean, I like, <laughs> I do this like every night. So I really do know. Um, <laughs> it's significantly different, definitely from the first three batches. I mean, the first batch was a tough one for us. I mean, we were like, we were, we were figuring that's why, I mean, the first batch, we only did 75 cases. It was truly yeah. a beta test. Um, uh, and, and, you know, with batch four, which was one of the, you know, obviously the one on the, the, the most recent one that had our old label uh, that, you know, that was still two to two to three year old juice. That was uh, one that we, you know, it came out great. But what happened was when we made that jump to batch five, our process kind of, you know, we kind of tweaked our process and, you know, it starts with things like, you know, pulling samples of every single barrel. Okay. Like if, you know, if we go in with an, uh, you know, you know, a set number of barrels, we're going to go into dump. Uh, there's a good chance that we're going to be pulling a lot out because they're off profile as like, as just a baseline. And so being able to go into a bottling run, already knowing what our blend is going to be, which barrels we're using and how much of those barrels that we're using, uh, it, it's, it, it actually, you know, it actually pays to be, you know, prepared. It's like as simple as that. <laughs> I'm Figure out your that. process as you go. And then once you get it dialed in, it kind it's of- It's amazing what control. preparation can do. Yeah. yeah. Our batches were a lot smaller. So we were, you know, we, we were trying to maximize our juice and we would hold a lot of it back, but we still had to use almost every barrel. But as our batches get bigger, you know, we can put barrels inside and say, you know, you sit sit for a little more, you know, maybe you'll make it to the next batch, you know, maybe it goes into a, a cast finish. Um, so we're starting to kind of generate this, well, it's not an arsenal yet, but hopefully someday <laughs> of, <laughs> of barrels. I like the verbiage. Oh. No, arsenal sounds great. Yeah. Wep I like yeah. weapons depot. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, Arms Depot, Weapons okay. Depot, yeah. Magazine. Like, yeah, I like all of Commando, 1987. <laughs> yeah, I would say, yeah, like stop at the depot Link. and then drop Same. right into Predator. <laughs> I like everything about that. <laughs> you guys got the new location for it too. So, I mean, now the, the, the processes are sort of uh, working their way out and the location is there to aid along with it. I mean, I, I see the arsenal growing rapidly now, right? Well, yeah, I mean, we did, we're, you know, I think part of it was, you know, it's for us, you know, we still are bootstrapping this business. We don't have outside investors. So there, there's always going to be a very, like, we have to be very, very, you know, play, pay such close attention to our operating margin and our yeah. operating cash flow because um, every dollar that we put into sales and marketing takes away from that inventory, right? Mm -hmm, right. And so there's a really fine balance that, that we're constantly uh, up against is that just managing that inventory and and you then we and now that we're kind of as we go into 2021 we have to really factor in these these new markets. I mean, the last thing you want to do is launch in a new market and then you're like, oh, I didn't realize you want a barrel strength. <laughs> you know, like right. it, it, so you have to be really really careful. And of course, you got to make sure that um, your uh, your existing partners and and distributors are you know obviously are where everything. It's just it's it's a whole it's a whole process that. You know, I think we're starting to see the holistic picture um, and it's it's about, you know, it's really about a lot of that is about cash flow management. That's yeah. good to know. So, yeah, like it, it hurts to expand into a new state. But if you don't have the stock right. to remain an old state, then, you know, it's kind of a moot effort. There's no reason. Yeah, there's no point. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So on that same thread, how many states are you guys in right now? Well, th well, we actually have. So we're in 13 states right now, but a few of those are online only. Okay. So okay. We do a lot of our online, like, you know, even actually uh, a bunch of them are, if you, I mean, we, we, like DC is a great example. We're not distributed in DC, but we can sell and, and do, you know, work together in DC. Like we did on the Arburban blend as an example, like that was fulfilled through Wash, uh, yeah, Washington, DC. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. We, we have a lot of the, that, like those kind of states set up, which technically are states, but um, you know, full on distribution is, is uh, nine states. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, that's a pretty big improvement since the last time we spoke too, which is, is great to see. Like, I mean, you know, I'm blessed here in Wisconsin, one of your, uh, your very early States. And it, very, it, it, one of the very first second state. Yeah. That's right. I, I love it. I mean, it's great. I actually, I picked some up this last weekend, but, uh, drinking the, the new barrel strength, I think, uh, you know, the profile is really developed and I like it a lot. And you, I mean, with that one too, it's interesting about it. I've just noticed that there's, I think I got it a little bit in batch four. But in batch five, I don't know what it is about the blend. Maybe it's the the, the wheat and corn just coming together. I just, I just get like this orange zest. I get citrus. I'm getting this like really interesting orange blast. It uh, So John and I had Aaron Chepanek from Smoke Wagon. We were talking about he also sources from MGP and like – we were amazed at how much cinnamon there was, like cinnamon, like yeah. zesty spice. Um, mm -hmm. That was and like turning to 11 notes. on that last batch that we tried. Yeah, this reminds me, it, it's kind of like a combination of that and like wild turkey where it's like orange peel, like pepper, oh, like cool. brown sugar, clove, and cinnamon. And it, it, it's all coming together really nicely. I'm still trying to imagine a world where I could actually go buy a bottle of it. <laughs> I did have a call with a distributor in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island today. So we're getting closer, buddy. Yes. Step in the right direction. <laughs> day by day yeah we're getting closer um no but we uh I, I and like what i what i love to see what gives us like what we're getting really excited for is what is that gonna taste like at six and seven years old i mean that yeah. blend i mean we're we're really you know we're, we're we we think this blend is is a good blend for for the profile that we want and might as well just keep going down this path. I mean, we've got four products. We've never used anything other than the same three bourbon mash bills in any of our products, which is interesting, right? Cause there's just so many flavor profiles you can go down. It's keeping right. us busy. Right. Yeah. So, And that, that's a great point. And so I believe it was late 2020. You guys also released the Rose cask. How did, uh, how did that land for people? Did you find people were really into it? Like what was the, I, I forget. I, I should have the, that was four grain as well, right? Yeah, that was exactly that was batch one. Oh, sorry, Daniel. I feel like I'm like no, <laughs> no. The 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 rose, uh, yeah, it was a similar kind of mash bill blend, and um, 
it went over really well, I think. You know, we were super excited to get it out there. Um, we had a lot of like work leading up to the release of it. Uh, a lot of compliance issues, just getting the cola and all that stuff. But we got it out there and I think it was well received, a lot of good feedback. And, um, you know, we're working on batch two right now. Oh, excellent. Good. I I, nice. I mean, I know you guys burned through your stocks of the rosé cast because yeah. I, was, uh, I was trying to actually pick one up for John and it like sold out before I could grab one. Uh, I, we had I don't think I have a bottle in my house. Like, I, I didn't even... I didn't even grab a bottle for myself. I got to go to the store and buy one. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Dude, we had to buy three cases back from our New Jersey distributor. <laughs> talk about, talk about the, like, we are, like, clearly we're not great at inventory management. <laughs> uh, or you just I mean, make so much good whiskey that it can't stay on the shelf. Uh, There's too no, much we're, we're, we're trying some new things, you know, just kind of at like a test level right now. Uh, sure. Before we like invest in putting the juice in the, in the cast. Um, so we're, we might change it up. We might keep it the same, but I think we're kind of like barrel strength. We're, we're really hoping to just kind of like improve it and just push forward with it, you know, make it a little more, uh, give it a little more depth. Mm -hmm. That's well, awesome. Like again, we're going to now, it's like, we always like to kind of start kind of at a, at a benchmark and then every batch, let's just keep it progressing on it. One thing that I think is interesting about the Rosé is that, so we didn't bottle that till, what I mean, we bottled it maybe in mid September or like early September, right? It was like late in the year, yeah. Those barrels were dumped in southern France probably in January for the rose season. You know, they had these probably in the US, their their rose probably in April. And so that's that's a long time between, you know, you know, granted that they had a process, so there was still moisture, but still it's a that's it. You're talking eight, like seven, eight months almost, eight months. And so with batch two, um, there's, I'll be honest, there's a delay in these barrels because the season's, you know, late. season's late and they don't, they're not as, they're not as rushed as like, I'm like, where are the barrels? Where are the barrels? Where are the barrels? And they, they, they'll dump them when they're ready. Yep. And, but I can tell you this, I think it's going to have a very different profile. I think you're going to get a much bigger strawberry shortcake punch because these things are just going to be that much fresher. Yeah. Just given the time frame, we're going to get them a month later. We're going to have them. And that's juice awesome. will be in them. That I mean, that's a huge difference. And like, even yeah. for, you know, for fans in the audience who are like Scotch fans, we talk about like a wet barrel versus a dry barrel, and like it's yeah. very clear. And like, like producers like Edra Dower, and you know, in Spring Bank, sometimes you're getting barrels. Like, you you wonder if they went even a weekend without being filled with something because it's just so much barrel influence. That that that's a good point to speak to. Like, it, it's kind of interesting to know that like. We, we might get more rosé in the 2021 Penelope rosé cask. That's, and that's kind of what I want. I think I, I want, I mean, me personally, um, I think it be, it was, and I like the fact that it was subtle. So it wasn't like the wine was overpowering the bourbon, sure. but I, I think the, I think they, the, when we did our tests of it, and these are like pre DSP rudimentary, won't even get into details, like on how Danny and I were doing it, probably like in, in, my in that room in the back. But, it, you know, it, there, there is a profile where it's going to have that kind of perfect combination of that strawberry with, with that kind of light vanilla. And, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. That's we'll awesome. see how it comes out. I like the tinker. No, I mean, I mean, I, I drink a lot of, like, Grenache and stuff. So it was even mm -hmm. fun to see you guys were using, like, Grenache Rosé. Um, you know, that's a big red wine favorite of ours. But, I, nice. I mean, I can't think of any other Rosé, you know, finished bourbon whiskey in the U.S. So... You know, I can tell you well. a lot of rosés do not go well with bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. That sounds like it's from experience. We have looked long and far for something that even remotely worked. And this one, and this worked really well. And it was like night and day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we were thinking about doing like a double finish too, like see to see if that gave it like a little, that, that little extra punch. But so we're, we're thinking about some different things. We're going to play around. Uh, we are kind of playing around right now, but I was surprised that like, I didn't know, you know, this, the rosé season or the, like when they dump the barrels compared to when they harvest the, you know, everything it, it's, it changes. I thought it was like, Oh, it's January, dump the barrels. And it's like a big planned out thing. It's like, no, they, they base it on, I guess, worldwide demand. Yeah. Uh, they base it on weather, things like that. That's kind of how we do our inventory planning too. 
weather and worldwide based demand. on the weather <laughs> it's raining today and i don't want to go do it <laughs> no it's funny though like you mentioned it like speaking of raining like i've, I've been uh i've been a fan of like mezcal which is an agave spirit for a very long time um and some producer recently just like they've always done this distillation in the dry season but this distiller decided to do it in the rainy season it was super interesting just to like be like oh that makes a very like you know it makes a difference and it's like mm -hmm. very impactful and it was just super fascinating like like factors like you're just like eh whatever you know um actually you know come into play in a very big way in some of these productions oh yeah no i'm sure i mean that's one thing that we're i mean we're still learning every time we go into a bottling run i mean because it because it is a subtle profile especially on on our kind of traditional foregrain and i mean there it's amazing the influence you know the most minor thing that you don't even think has any sort of impact. I mean, there, there's a lot of variables that do do offset it. I think one thing that we've done, a process that we've done that that is very helpful, um, that we'll continue to do is pull samples of literally every barrel, sip through, and you know, again, we got to think about two single barrel inventory. So you, maybe there's a single barrel you put aside, um, but then really pulling pulling out off profile ones that just need maybe more time. Or truth, truthfully, we I mean, even on the last time we pulled one out that we felt would be better for rosé. Just because it was sweet, it just act that sweetness. I think that was a wheat barrel. Oh, so. okay. That that's interesting to know. And it, it's funny. Um, Mash is weighing in here. It seems like he's a big fan of the uh, the batch five as well. Oh, nice. You guys were connected like, with Jason, yeah. right? Yeah, nice, like right. That, uh, yeah, I was just talking with him earlier this week about uh, some of your stuff. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I was I I, I was watching um, what what I forget it's called uh, Nick right? and Mash. I was yeah. watching the Dominican Mass show. I was awesome. Nice job on that too. It was really <laughs> cool. And uh, I pinged them. I was like, dude, I'd love to send you a bottle. Uh, get your take on it. So I appreciate awesome. it. Thanks, bud. Yeah, that's great. So that that that's a perfect segue too. So like, you know, you guys are kind of leaning into the experimental side of things. And last year we did, uh, I'm trying to think of the scientific way to say this, but we did some like kind of wild shit with you guys. Like we did a, that's you know, exactly our own, the right way to say our it. Own, <laughs> own blend for our bourbon, but it, you know, we've got a few minutes left, and like, I won't, I won't tease out the whole plan for 2021. But it, it sounds like a, I mean, we'll be coming back for another blend. Uh, maybe talk about some of the the new stuff you guys are interested in doing for 2021. Hey, Danny, want to kick it off, and then I'll. What do you think? I mean, so you know, we're we've been hunkered down on blends, right? And then we we're hunkering down on finishes. You know, now we're really starting to look into the barrels themselves, you know, and, and the, the characteristics of barrels and and uh, how they're made up. So, you know, that's kind of where we're headed right now. It's one of the one of the reasons why we got our place here in New Jersey to do the R&D, you know, so we can blend, fill barrels, work on them, watch them day after day, pull samples. <laughs> yeah, I think it. I, I mean, I sent you guys an email about it. So, I mean, on our first on our first private select, um, we the you know we kind of because Penelope Bourbon is a blend of three different bourbon mash bills, so we don't have a single barrel, and until we have a custom you know until we do a custom mash with new distillate that they're doing as our four grain mash, like that's gonna it's kind of gonna be a that's a tricky you know tricky thing for us. So what we felt was again not nothing groundbreaking, but we felt it'd be fun to hey we did a blend we have a blend. Let's, you know, let's blend this. So for the first batch, which we all did with you, we uh, we all, you know, we came, you guys came up with a blend. It was awesome. And, you know, I think just in the spirit of, it was a fun project to work on, obviously with you guys, for us, I felt like, what are, Dan, I was like, Danny, what are, what like, what, what's kind of interesting, like right now that, like, I personally, I'm still kind of new to learning. Um, and it was really the, the, these, these different char levels and different toast, you know, different toast levels and kind of what that rebarreling process looks like when it's going in new American oak. Um, and so we, you know, we've got a couple four new American oak barrels coming in from space side. And, you know, our thought was kind of, you know, come up with that blend and then, and then, you know, look to, to rebarrel that, um, with different char and toast levels and see how it comes out. So that's kind of the tentative plan for now. I it's always a work in yeah. progress. <laughs> I like it. I no, like it's cool. cool. I mean, so, I mean, for everyone that's watching here, I, you know, to give you a little tidbit, um, our bourbon is going to get a little bit toasty in 2021. <laughs> We've been uh, chatting a little bit. I mean, everyone, I mean, it's interesting. Love it or hate it. You know, Michter's has been in Toasted Barrel for a long time. You know, Woodford, Double Oak, 
uh, Old Forester 1910. Now we have Wild Turkey releasing their Masters Keep one. Um, so we figured, well, like, why I not talk about divisive? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's only been like mildly controversial, but um, I think it'll be interesting. Like, I was really amazed at how many people wanted to follow along with the blending we did in 2020. How many people, you know, got their our bourbon um, Penelope blend from Sealbox and like loved just like the ever loving shit out of it. So. I'm looking forward to tinkering in 2021. I think we're going to have a good time. For sure. It's kind of like what Mike said, you know, we're just like, we're doing, we want to, we want to experience everything um, together with, with all of you and, and kind of go through all these, you know, different learning experiences and, and all the characteristics that make up, you know, what bourbon is. So I think the blending experience with you guys was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this, this toast experience. Likewise, I think, and we're going to be bottling these puppies in house. No yeah. pressure. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. cool. I, I think you wanna, uh, if you want to come and help out, we could use. We could yeah. probably. Use <laughs> I, I was thinking we might be able it. to do that. Actually, yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do a little reality TV action. I think. No, yeah. I mean, John and I haven't a had a good reason to wear a GoPro and just like kind of get down and dirty and like. Yeah. I think that'd be super fun. <laughs> I mean, that. I might regret it. Like it might be a lot of work, and I just you do the like when you guys land at Newark Airport, like the uh, the theme song to the Sopranos comes on, and <laughs> yeah. it's you guys driving to the warehouse and like going past like the areas that we like kind of get to to go to the warehouse, and all of a sudden you guys pull in, you're like, "All right, guys, let's go." <laughs> oh, oh, you guys don't wear suits here at the bottling facility? Weird. <laughs> John comes in with a full suit on. I thought this is the <laughs> yeah, like your reception. Be like this isn't how we do it. In board shorts and suit jackets, <laughs> and I don't know why. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, all right, that sounds like it's got to happen, so we'll we'll make it yeah. happen. One, one, I, one, I, one, we're, I haven't. we we just started put. We just started the that process. So it, you know, I think they're from talk. Like again, I don't still know. We're gonna know really soon, but I do think there is a char and toast that's actually gonna be a really good complement to our cast strength. And it's almost, I think it's almost going to amplify and play off that sweetness yeah, uh, in kind of new and unique ways. And I think that's the primary thing that we're trying to get out of it to see if this is uh, to see what, what we can kind of get from it. Man. I love it. I mean, it, it's super cool. Like, it, I mean, at our bourbon, like we don't get to experiment that much. Like we get to buy things that exist every now and then I get to convince someone to sell us something that's maybe brand new, but you know, getting to come along for the entire ride that is, you know, previously blending, now blending, secondary maturation. Like, I think that's super cool. And, and you know, I'm really happy that we get to bring a lot of people in to kind of see the inside of the process that is very opaque from other producers. We're open book. <laughs> I like it. No, we, yeah, we appreciate it, guys. And uh, no, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. That's going to be awesome. And yeah. I mean, and there's lots of different varieties, and we won't give it all away now, but I know you guys got some cool stuff coming in. But uh yeah, I mean, it's cool. You guys have you you've you've covered a lot of ground since we first started talking not even a year ago. I think it was May when we we first started talking. It was right about Whiskey from Home by Bourbon Pursuit. And we uh started to chat and like, you know, even then I wouldn't have expected like you guys would be releasing like wine finish casts, like custom blends, blends that are finished in toasted barrels. So um, it's kooky shit. I like it. You can't tell from this angle, but I am gray all around. <laughs> it's, That's okay. I am too. So we don't need to talk about that. It has been, no, it's a lot. I mean, it's just really, you know, we have, you know, it's just Danny and I, I mean, we have two folks that help out Jason Bridget, but I mean, it's a, it's, we run a really lean operation. That's wild. So, I mean, okay. like, I mean, I buy a lot of barrels, but like that doesn't have anything to do with like the production and the distribution and the selling and the marketing. And like, that's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to say it. it. Is. I mean, it's crazy, but it's, it's you know, we're, we're, we just got to keep working hard, man. We got to keep grinding. That's all. That's it. Oh, Putting out I think product. if you guys just keep doing what you've been doing, it's going to be, it's going to work out good. I mean, you get the the mad scientist back here who brings his work home with him every day. <laughs> Does a little bit of extra homework, maybe has an extra cocktail or two, and then decides what's good and what's not. I like that. <laughs> that works out good for you guys. So stick yeah. with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so as we wrap this thing up here, let's uh, go ahead and give you guys a minute to just kind of direct everybody to where they can find Penelope Bourbon and where they can reach out to you if they'd like to. Perfect. Yeah. PenelopeBourbon.com. We, uh, we just implemented a new store locator. Check it out. It's actually, it actually works. 
and there's pretty sure, limited yeah. latency when they uh, when they load up and hit those APIs. Um, and then um, our Instagram at Penelope Bourbon is our, our Insta, so check us out. That's awesome, awesome. Guys. Th thanks again for coming on and talking about your stuff with us. We really appreciate it. We love getting you in here to mix it up. We yeah. do, and I'm I'm super looking forward to. Um, this is not the last we'll see of you guys in 2021. We have some fun stuff. Um, our bourbon's committed to taking a couple a couple batches, barrels, whatever you call them, in 2021, which I'm looking forward to. Um, and yeah, so thanks for your time, guys. Um, if you're looking for more from John, you can find him at The Bourbon Finder. Uh, you can find him at thebourbonfinder.com. If you're looking specifically to find bourbon, uh, maybe don't email him because he's gotten a lot of those lately. But if you're interested in learning about bourbon that he has found, um, he's your stop. Um, as always, I'm Jay. I'm at whiskeyraiders.com. If you're curious about the score, we're the Rotten Tomatoes of Whiskey. Uh, Penelope's up on the website. We'll have batch five up this week. So look forward to those reviews. And uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, hang around. We'll uh, we'll catch some drinks in the green room. But for everyone else, thanks for joining us. And I uh, hope you guys have a great week. Uh, catch us for weekly whiskey after hours. And that will drop on Thursday morning. Um, in the meantime, uh, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers, guys.